the fact that uh, the commissioner, uh, Commissioner Martin, is here um, really illustrates the uh, commitment that the state of New Jersey has made to its beaches and to its coast. Um, obviously, I'm not that old, but I'm old enough to remember uh, going down the shore as a kid and making sure that the hotel we stayed at had a pool because we were never sure if we could be able to go in the water. We weren't sure it was going to wash up. Um, I can say I go to the, the beaches all the time with my kids, and I don't have that concern anymore. There's a lot of progress that's been made um, over a relatively short amount of time, and that's due to the commitment of the state and the DEP uh, to improving conditions along the coast. Uh, the other big thing that Commissioner Martin mentioned is the uh, beach nourishment program. New Jersey has been very active in that. Um, we've been very successful in securing a large amount of federal money to bolster our beaches. The other thing I have vivid memories of is the, the waves crashing over the seawall in uh, Seabright and Monmouth Beach in 1992. Uh, that's actually the reason that I got into coastal engineering and the reason I do what I do. Um, the sad part is now, growing up now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily have gotten into this because you don't see that anymore. And, and a big part of that is because of the beaches. The beaches are there to protect the infrastructure behind um, the roads, uh, the houses, um, the, the businesses, uh, and the people. Um, and so we've done a great job uh, of making, uh, making the beaches uh, stronger and, and making sure that they're able to withstand storm impacts. Um, so with that being said, uh, uh, I'm, I have an advantage because the State of the Show report is in the back, so all the facts and figures are there. Um, so I'm just going to touch on a few things uh, of particular interest over this past winter. Um, as I said, this is the sixth year that I'm doing this, the seventh year I've been involved in writing the report, and fortunately I've only had to write one bad report. And that was in 2009, 2010, the flooding that Commissioner Martin mentioned earlier. It's really the only bad year that we've had since I've been doing this event. Um, once again, this year, uh, we had a very, very calm winter. Um, obviously, Hurricane Irene was a, a big threat earlier in the summer, threatened to uh, get the season off to a bad start. But all things considered, the impacts of Irene weren't anywhere as near what we expected them to be. Uh, there were predictions of four to six feet and even up to 10 feet of storm surge. Um, we didn't see anything like that. Um, when we look at our, when we compile our report, we use data from the Atlantic City Tide Gauge and some NOAA buoys offshore um, to look at the wave heights. And just uh, for reference, the, the storm surge during Hurricane Irene was somewhere around three and a half or uh, 3.2 feet, um, which is much less than predicted. Uh, wave heights were about 20 feet. Uh, just to give you an idea, the November uh, nor'easter in 2009, the Veterans Day storm, as it's called, there were 27 foot waves reported offshore. So the conditions during Irene were actually much less severe um, than during that nor'easter. The other thing is that with hurricanes, they come and they go, they pass relatively quickly. So uh, the, the, the erosional conditions for the beaches just don't last um, nearly as long as they do during the nor'easter. So uh, we kind of escaped that one um, with much less damage than what, 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 what could have been. Um, pretty much after, after Irene, the rest of the winter was, uh, was pretty boring for us. Um, Really, there was only one other storm of significance, and that was related to uh, the ice storm uh, that we had in October. Um, but again, in, in the scheme of things, obviously the impacts, uh, both during Irene and then during that ice storm, were much actually more significant inland than they were along the coast. Um, Irene caused lots of rain and lots of wind damage, and that ice storm obviously caused lots of issues with utilities and electric uh, being out for a big portion of the state. But in terms of the coastal impacts, um, really uh, very minimal uh, in terms of what they did to the beaches. Um, overall, the, if you can believe it, the uh, actual water level recorded at Atlantic City was larger during the October ice storm than it was during Hurricane Irene, which is something that you might not expect. Uh, part of that reason has to do with the fact that even though the storm surge was less during that October storm, it just happened to occur uh, over a period uh, closer to spring tide when the water levels on the coast are just naturally higher. Plus, because it was more of a nor'easter type storm, uh, the conditions were spread out such that the peak in the storm surge, or one of the peaks in the storm surge, occurred at high tide. So the combination of the high tide, plus the higher spring tides, plus the storm surge occurring actually brought the water levels a little bit higher in Atlantic City during that storm um, than during Irene. <coughs> Excuse me. So the combination of, uh, uh, of the fact that these were the really the only two storms that, that we had this, this past winter has really kind of uh, left our beaches in excellent condition uh, moving forward for the summer. Um, again, pretty much as, as good a condition as we've had over the past uh, 10 years or so. Um, one thing that we've been doing at Stevens is working with the storm erosion index. Um, it's a way to let us quantify basically uh, how significant storms are. 
Uh, to give you an idea, Hurricane Irene, we put it into a category classification, like just like hurricanes. Uh, Hurricane Irene was a, a strong category two according to our erosion index. Uh, the November storm in 2009 was a weak category five. So just to give you an idea, um, really Irene, which was the biggest storm this year, wasn't all that big. Um, the other thing uh, I just wanted to touch on, um, we don't do predictions ourselves for the tropical storm outlooks, uh, but what we do is we kind of review those and just kind of uh, give them to you guys just to, to know what to expect. And of course, everything I say is going to change because the latest prediction comes out either today or tomorrow. Um, but uh, we rely on the, the Tropical Storm uh, Prediction Center at Colorado uh, State University. Um, so they're, they're calling for a relatively average hurricane uh, season uh, with 10 named storms, uh, four uh, hurricanes and two intense hurricanes. Uh, that's pretty much right on the average, the long-term 50-year average. Um, they do uh, call for a reduction in the percent likelihood that a storm will impact the East Coast and the Caribbean. Uh, long-term average is a 52% chance a storm will make landfall on the East Coast or the Caribbean. Uh, this year it's down to 42%. So there's a, a lower, slightly lower than average uh, possibility of that. As always, the, 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 the possibility of a hurricane making direct landfall in New Jersey remains pretty low. It's less than 1%. Um, but that certainly doesn't mean that we don't have to be uh, vigilant and, and be prepared um, for hurricanes and tropical storms. Last year was a great, uh, a great example. Uh, the evacuation that we did in advance of Hurricane Irene was certainly warranted. Um, and it was certainly uh, it, something that we need to be ready to do in case that storm does come. Um, Again, we've been lucky. So we've been lucky over the past ten years or so, where we haven't had to uh, put those plans into action. Um, but uh, the idea that you know we have to have these plans, they have to be in, in place, and we have to be ready to uh, move forward with them. And the same thing uh, after a storm, we have to be ready to, to, to clean up and get back to business. Um, and this last year was a great example. Irene was week before Labor Day. Uh, obviously, big impacts to the tourism season potentially, uh, but we were able to to get back to business. Um, really quickly uh, and uh, have a, actually a pretty successful Labor Day weekend. Um, so that is, I guess, the, the state of the shore, and uh, I'll be around after for any questions anybody has.